Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode we're going to be previewing the Atlanta Falcons 2017 season. Uh, we're going to be looking at their schedule, uh, the talent on the roster, and making a decision in terms of how many wins they could potentially get, uh, the toughest matchups, all that kind of stuff. Just kind of previewing uh, the season for them. And the way that we're going to do this analytics based is I went through every single NFL team and I scored each position based on how they performed in, in data, somewhat based on what they did in the past, and also what they did in the NFL uh, to a certain extent. So this, the way the scoring works is if a player has all pro potential or has proven to be an all pro player, they get four points. If they're a Pro Bowl player, a multiple Pro Bowl player, they get three points. If they're a starter, long-term starter, which means 64 starts or more, or have the potential to be a 64 start guy, they get two points for that player. And then if they're a backup slash reserve, with that being their ultimate upside, they get one point. Uh, so you'll have teams who have backup slash reserve starting. So that, just so you know, just so you understand that kind of aspect. Uh, so that's how I did it. I scored all the teams that the Falcons are playing and in addition to the Falcons and we'll go through, uh, well, first of all, we'll talk about the major strengths and weaknesses of this team. Uh, we'll, and then we'll get into some of the tougher matchups that they're going to have this year and then ultimately come to the conclusion of how many wins they're going to win, uh, potentially. Um, so, uh, again, we'll, we'll see what happens, but Let's get into uh, the next part of the show, just in terms of explaining some of the biggest strengths of this Atlanta Falcons team based on data. So based on the analytics, uh, the Falcons are a very strong team. Uh, it shouldn't be a surprise. I mean, this is a, a team that was representing the NFC in the Super Bowl, uh, but they have lots of positives. In terms of the biggest strengths they have, the number one strength they have is at the wide receiver position. Julio Jones is by far one of the best, if not the best, wide receiver in the NFL. But they have a ton of depth on this roster. Uh, you know, it, it isn't just Julio Jones. Mohamed Sanu has a good starter profile. Taylor Gabriel has a good starter profile as well. Justin Hardy has a good starter profile. Andre Roberts has a very strong starter profile. And then you get into a bit of the offensive line, which I think is another major strength. Jake Matthews. Uh, is a super athletic uh, offensive tackle for them that is very that's proven to be very good with Pro Bowl to All Pro potential. Uh, Andy Lavitri has starter potential at the guard spot. Alex Mack has All Pro potential at the center position. Uh, Wes uh, Sweetser, or Sweetser, I probably said that wrong, but he's another guy that has some pretty good positives in terms of his profile. Ryan Schrader has good positives as a starting right tackle. Uh, and then, of course, you get into the running back position where they've had a lot of success with Devontae Freeman, Tevin Coleman. And, of course, Matt Ryan last year had the best statistical season of any quarterback in uh, 2016. Uh, it was by far his best season as an NFL player uh, with Matt Ryan. So, offensively, tons of positives. Tons of super-duper athletic players and that's a major positive. And on defense, uh, you have guys like Desmond Trufant, who is, has at least Pro Bowl to all pro potential at the cornerback position based on his analytics. Deion Jones has all pro potential at the, at the linebacker position. And I think eventually you'll see his name being mentioned with guys like Luke Keekley, guys like Navarro Bowman, because he has that type of profile in terms of analytics. Uh, Vic Beasley is a super athletic player as well, who, of course, uh, you know, had 15 plus sacks last year, and I think his career will kind of stay the way it is, you know, kind of stay on the same track as it is. Uh, Don, they added Don Torrey Poe, super athletic nose tackle type, uh, who has been fairly productive as well in, in his NFL career and his college career. Grady Jarrett has good athleticism traits, and of course, had a big Super Bowl appearance. Uh, and the safety position is also a little bit underrated. Uh, Keanu Neal is, is definitely solid. Ricardo Allen is kind of not so much. But they have lots of positives in terms of their defense. They don't have great top-to-bottom talent. There are players like 
Rashid Hageman and Devondre Campbell and Ricardo Allen, like I said, uh, who are not the best players uh, overall. You know, these are guys that are, have more of a backup sort of vibe to them based on their analytics, but they but they have a good mix of players that are some of the best players in the NFL with a few players that are just not that great overall. So it's a very strong team. Their offense is a lot better than their defense at this point, but they're only missing like three different pieces, you know, and it's, it's really just a matter of in a couple more draft classes, they'll really be even better. And that, that's kind of the biggest point to make about this, this Falcons team in terms of their biggest strengths is they have a lot of strengths and not very many weaknesses. And the weaknesses that they have uh, are, are fairly big weaknesses, but they're not to the point, like they have enough things on their roster to kind of uh, mask those issues, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, so they, they just have a lot of positives in terms of uh, those types of aspects of their team. In terms of one of the biggest tests they have this season, uh, week 11 against Seattle, they'll have their biggest test when it comes to secondary play. Uh, the Seattle Seahawks have had one of the best secondaries, if not the best secondary in the NFL uh, for a while now. Uh, and a lot of that is because of Earl Thomas, of course, Cam Chancellor, Richard Sherman. Uh, but they also added Shaq Griffin as a rookie this year, and he has a lot of positives in terms of his analytics. So um, that's by far going to be your toughest test uh, to your wide receiver core, which is already fairly strong, is the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, and I think it's sort of a push, really. Um, when, it, when you look at their, the secondary they're going to face, or at least you guys are going to face, in the Seattle Seahawks, it's not to the point where it neutralizes your wide receiver threat or your wide receiver core. Like, it's not to that point. It just makes it more of a push uh, in terms of uh, facing them. So uh, I would say that that's going to be the toughest matchup for the, your wide receiver core is that secondary uh, because of guys like Richard Sherman, Cam Chancellor, and Earl Thomas. And keep in mind, this is also if those guys are healthy uh, once we get to uh, week... Uh, uh, week 11 so uh, that's the main thing you'll have to worry about is just that secondary for the most part that's going to be one of the toughest ones you're going to face in 2017. The toughest test for your offensive line is going to be against the Buffalo Bills. They don't get a lot of talk uh, about how good their their defensive line is but uh, Shaq Lawson is someone who has tremendous athleticism with tremendous production who is going to be in a, you know in his second year this year. Marcel Darius is a super athletic, super productive defensive tackle as well based on his analytics. Kyle Williams has a lot of positive in terms of production and his athleticism uh, and has become a multiple Pro Bowl player. And he's going to be a tough player to, to match up with. And of course they have Jerry Hughes who took a while for his career to really take off, but is still someone who is fairly athletic, has a lot of positives in terms of athleticism and production. So that is probably going to be the toughest matchup that your offensive line is going to have, especially in the inside, because you're stronger from the outs, from your tackles. The biggest strengths for your offensive line are your tackles and your center, not necessarily your guards. Uh, and this is going to be a really Im important test uh, because Marcel Darius and Kyle Williams as a tandem is probably one of the best tandems in the NFL when it comes to defensive tackle tandem. So that'll be a, a tough day at the office when it, when, you, when it comes to playing the Bills. But just know and just be sort of thankful that the Bills don't really have the best offense overall. Uh, so you should be happy a little bit that even though you may struggle a bit on offense, I think there's enough things on your defense to kind of stall Buffalo enough so that even though you'll have somewhat of a rough time having to deal with that defensive line, you'll still be able to put up enough points on the board to win that game inevitably. And then of course the biggest test for your defensive line is going to be the Dallas Cowboys, of course. Uh, they have one of the most athletic offensive lines in the NFL. Uh, and every position is great. The offensive tackle position for Dallas, 
uh, right now is amazing. Uh, if Lyle Collins ends up being the starting right tackle, it's still going to be amazing to deal with. The guard position is super talented with Zach Martin. And even if they have Ron Leary or if they have, uh, well, they're not going to have Ron Leary, but even if, whoever they have in the guard position is going to contribute fairly well. And of course, Travis Frederick is also one of the best centers in the NFL. Um, so if not the best center. So that's going to be a tough matchup for your defense. Uh, to deal with, to try to get pressure on Dak Prescott, uh, you know, just in terms of the your your defensive lineman, um, Vic Beasley, you know, might be a little bit inconsistent, you know, um, because you don't have, you know, your defensive line is good, you have very good players, uh, but you're gonna have to try to get a good rotation going, I guess, as I'm trying to say when it comes to this Dallas line, so. Um, I think that the Dallas line is probably going to be the biggest test for your defensive line to try to overcome this year in Week 10, and uh, it'll be it'll be a very fun matchup to see how it all turns out because I think that'll be a good test to see. You know, at that point uh, in the season, you'll really get a good idea of your identity as a team, and I think this will be a big test to see if this defensive line can create pressure because they they can it's just they're gonna have to play their cards right be a little bit more strategic uh, just because of how good that Dallas line is so ultimately looking at their schedule based on my data I have the Falcons with 15 likely wins and one loss uh, the only loss that I see is against the Dallas Cowboys and it's only the difference between these teams on paper, between Atlanta and Dallas, uh, is by one point. Uh, that's how close it is. Uh, so don't get too angry at it. I mean, I would honestly say it's more of a push. Dallas just has a little bit more uh, elite talent at certain positions uh, than Atlanta. I mean, that's really all it comes down to is i mean atlanta is built a little bit more evenly than dallas dallas has certain positions that are just super duper weak while atlanta has pretty good depth at every position so far uh and i think uh it, it's going to be a tough matchup i mean i think that that dallas game is really going to be a good sort of test for both these teams there are going to be injuries at that point which may change things you know if Dallas loses some really significant pieces, this will make this game a lot more even. But right now, based on the data, uh, Dallas has the edge by about one point when it comes to their analytics, when it comes to their analytics grade. So, uh, but, but overall, I see Atlanta doing very well this year. Uh, if, if injuries don't happen, if they don't lose key contributors, I think that this is going to be another year where they perform really well. I don't see a Super Bowl slump or anything like that unless injuries happen because that's the biggest thing guys is you know injuries happen and this changes everything you know when a when a pro bowl player goes down it affects things um, and it's really about who stays healthy and who can cobble together enough talent um, which is why depth is so important at the nfl level um, and, but the good thing is atlanta has a lot of depth they have a lot of good depth at all their positions so even if they do have some injuries they'll still be right there um, and that's what i expect i think your entire schedule for the most part is going to be pretty good i see 15 wins right now i see 15 wins uh with one loss against dallas uh but and there are going to be some tough teams here and there but i still see those as wins so this is going to be a fun year i'm really excited about what the Falcons are going to do because I think their defense is on the right track. Uh, I really like this offensive line. I'm actually going to do a video on their offensive line to kind of highlight some of the things about it because I think it's kind of an underrated group at this point. And uh, I also think that there's that defense I think is going to get better as well. Even though statistically they weren't the best last year, I still think that defense has a lot of things going for it. Uh, to where it could start to get into that elite area if they just get a few more positions, especially safety. If they get a little bit better at safety, they can do that. But 
the bottom line is I think that this is a team that is going to be just fine this year. Don't worry about the Atlanta Falcons because I think that they're going to uh, keep on chugging along in terms of the talent on this team from a data perspective. So again, my name is James Coburn. You can find my work at draftcoburn at wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well uh, with everybody that you know. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.